messages. Okay. So I'm just press on the hide icon on the on the bottom. Okay, fine. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Is that fine. So today we are going to be discussing the imaging approach to renal masses, and we as radiologists end up detecting a lot many renal masses and this is majorly because of two reasons that imaging has become quintessential in the clinical workup of any patient that reports to a hospital and also because at our disposal we have a number of sophisticated imaging modalities which can detect lesions much better. So what the numbers show us about renal masses are that 80% of renal masses are malignant and only 20% are benign. As I said, 60% of renal masses are incidentally detected by us radiologists for some other uh, uh, clinical indication when the patient walks into the radiology room and uh, uh, it is uh, not alarming that a huge proportion of these incidentally detected masses are going to be RCC. In fact, RCC is the most common malignant neoplasm in the adults. The only silver lining is that 50% of these RCC are going to be stage 1 lesions, again because imaging is so frequently being performed these days. So we as radiologists have the task of characterizing these incidentally detected renal masses with the aim to differentiate benign from malignant. And if a malignant mass is identified, we have to go ahead and stage the lesion. This is because our imaging findings are going to help the clinician or surgeon decide whether a partial nephrectomy is to be done or a, a radical nephrectomy is to be done or the surgery can actually be done away with and the patient can be kept under close surveillance. So uh, if we take a quick look at the imaging modalities available to us across the table, in the evaluation of renal masses, excretory urography does not have much of a role. Ultrasound still remains the first line imaging modality. It is very good for differentiating solid from cystic, identifying septae within a cystic mass, detection of fat, calcification. But as far as morphology detection goes, both CT and MRI are excellent for demonstrating the renal morphology as well as the renal function. MR complements CT because it is able to characterize the masses better. Enhancement can be detected better. Uh, certain uh, features like uh, diffusion restriction will help us to identify a malignant mass. And today, uh, both American College of Radiology and American Urology Association rate CT urography as the most appropriate uh, imaging modality for evaluation of a patient of hematuria. And why not? If we look at the corticomedullary phase here, you find that this is a small mass which is enhancing beautifully. Enhancement is similar to uh, that of the cortex. There is some amount of heterogeneity. And in the nephrographic phases, the lesion is showing a washout. This is because it is hypervascular. There is some indentation of the lower pole calluses. Yet on the excretory phase, you find that the renal function is maintained. So you have an excellent depiction and characterization of a mass available on CT urography and therefore both these cross-sectional modalities are very good for evaluation of renal masses but for staging of course we rely more on CT. This is because in a single study you can evaluate the lungs, bones and the liver as well. So what should be our imaging approach to a renal mass? Well, I go with a question and answer based approach. First of all, you have to identify that what you are seeing is indeed abnormal. Then you have to uh, differentiate between solid and cystic. This is important in order to narrow down our differentials. If it is a cyst, you have to make sure that it is a complex cyst and going towards malignancy. And finally, this crucial question is to be answered. So I'm going to be uh, taking you through a, a number of cases to show you what I'm talking about. So here uh, we have the nephrographic and the corticomedullary phase images. And you find that there is this tongue-like projection which looks like a mass on the nephrographic 
phase and this is the corticomedullary phase where this lesion is showing an enhancement and uh, uh, which is quite similar to the renal cortex on ultrasound. This was an isoechoic mass which was indenting the renal sinus and this is typically described as the split sinus sign. So what do you think this is? Is this something normal or is it abnormal? Well, this is the typical appearance of a hypertrophic column of Burton and it is this corticomedullary phase where you see this kind of enhancement where the cortex is enhancing similar to the rest of the cortex and the uh, inner part of the mass just like a normal parenchyma is not showing enhancement is going to help you to decide that this actually is a pseudo tumor made up of non-neoplastic renal tissue. It can mimic a mass on the nephrographic phases but the corticomedullary phase is decisive and dromedary humps persistent fetal lobulations can be encountered in the kidney and these are all pseudo tumors. So first rule out that you're not dealing with something which is a tumor mimic. Now, why is this differentiation of solid cystic important? Because as I said, we have to assist the surgeon to decide whether the patient can be kept on active surveillance or a surgery is required. So the cystic incidentally detected masses actually can be left alone. And especially in the elderly patients or those who are at risk uh, for surgery, whereas solid masses, even though small, will have to be removed. Uh, moreover, the differentials can be narrowed down. So if it is a cystic renal mass and if it has malignant features in a child, think of a multilocular cystic nephroma in an adult think of a cystic RCC. If the mass has got benign features, which we will be talking about in the course of this discussion, in a child, think of multicystic dysplastic kidney or a polycystic disease in the adult. And of course, uh, think about hydatid disease or renal abscess uh, or simple cysts, uh, which are again benign cystic masses, but they are quite characteristic. In a solid, in the child, there are two differentials uh, uh, for a solid renal mass with malignant features, and these are Wilms tumors and mesoplastic nephroma, whereas in the adult, RCC is most common, and then of course, a TCC in a patient who has a history of sickle cell disease, think of renal medullary carcinoma, very, very rare is renal sarcoma, and metastasis if there are bilateral solid masses. Uh, the benign masses in a child, uh, think of nephroblastomatosis. In an adult, you have a renenoma, oncocytoma, or angiomyolipoma. And we will see how imaging helps us to characterize these masses. So this distinction is very simple on ultrasound. When you see this anechoic lesion with imperceptible walls, on CT also, when you see the, the attenuation is less than 15 HU and the wall is not defined on MR, the typical fluid characteristics of a T1 hypointensity and a T2 hyperintensity in a cyst. What is crucial is differentiation of a simple from a complex cyst. This is because cystic lesions can be identified in about 40% of the population. And at least 50% uh, or half of these which are small in size are likely to be benign. But we also know that cystic RCC is common, especially the papillary variant of RCC presents as a cyst. And what is interesting about cystic uh, malignant masses is that these have a lower malignant potential and a more favorable biology because the cyst is uh, uh, constituting at least more than 25% of the tumor volume. So therefore, this distinction is important. And for this, we rely on the Bosniak classification system, where a simple cyst is that where the wall is thin, just a single or maybe two thin septae are present, calcification is insignificant, and there is no enhancement. And of course, a complex cyst where there are multiple septations, the wall is thickened, calcification is significant, solid component is going to be present in this cyst, and enhancement of the cyst uh, wall, the septations, and the solid component all make it 
uh, complex cyst. So now we're just going to see some cases in order to see how this kind of uh, Bosnian classification helps uh, uh, in characterizing the lesions. Uh, here you have cysts in both the kidneys. You find that there are no septae. There is no enhancement. This is the uh, CECT image. And as we discussed, this is the typical category one. Uh, if you see a cyst with a single septa, it is still a Bosnic one cyst. And these are benign, simple, and do not require any further evaluation. Now, uh, it's important to understand the enhancement terminology in Bosnian categorization. So there are two terms. One is measurable enhancement and the other is perceived enhancement. So measurable enhancement is said to be present when there is more than 20 HU attenuation difference between the NCCT and CECT. So an NCCT must be done uh, as a part of all renal imaging. And if measurable enhancement is present in a cystic mass, it is a category three or four lesion, which is malignant. Whereas if attenuation difference is less than 20, then you call it a perceived enhancement. You should also be aware of the pseudo enhancement, which is said to be present if the attenuation difference is less than 10 HU. So here there is a cystic mass. Uh, there is this arc of calcification. Um, there was a perceived enhancement in this part of the lesion. And when you see these characteristics of uh, short segment calcification or maybe few thin hairline septa within a cyst and still a perceived enhancement, this is a Bosnic two category cyst. Again, simple, benign, nothing to be done about it. Uh, in this patient, these are the NCCT and the CECT images. On NCCT, you find that there is a wall calcification. There are septae which are showing calcification. On CECT, maybe some amount of perceptible enhancement was detected over here. The attenuation uh, was not really significantly measured. So when you see something like this, this thick nodular calcification cannot be put into a category two. Uh, or uh, even if there is a minimal wall thickening and multiple thin septae, you have to place these lesions in a 2F category. That means that although these are probably benign, at least they have a 3 to 15% of malignancy and these have to be kept on a close 6 to 12 monthly follow-up and uh, for three years after which the mask can be left alone if there are no changes in this. Um, a cyst like this in which there are septations and there is calcification or a purely intrarenal cyst which is less than three centimeter in size are all placed in the 2F category. Now, uh, moving on here uh, on the NCCT and the CECT uh, images, you see that there is definitely a difference in the attenuation. There are multiple septations. Some of them are thick. Wall thickening can be appreciated. There is measurable enhancement in the lesion. And this is the typical appearance of a Bosnian three category cyst. And these lesions always are considered suspicious they warrant a biopsy and these lesions will require a partial nephrectomy. They just cannot be left alone. Um, here in this patient who had presented with abdominal pain, you find that there is a huge cystic mass. There are multiple septations which are showing enhancement. There is nodular thickening of the septations. Septal thickening more than one millimeter is significant. That is when the septa are more than hairline thickness, then of course you call them thickened. You don't have you don't have to think uh, that whether these are malignant or not. These are definitely malignant. So a Bosnian three category cyst, and this on biopsy turned out to be a multirocular cystic RCC, which is a subtype of clear cell RCC, which, as I discussed, has an excellent prognosis. Now in this pediatric age group, when you find this multilocular cystic mass and you see that the mass is showing septation, septa, wall uh, thickening, enhancement, which can be very well appreciated on this MR image, you uh, call this a multilocular cystic renal tumor. We as radiologists do not call it a cystic nephroma or a cystic nephroblastoma because the histopathology will decide whether blastemal cells are identified in the cyst wall or in the septa or not. And only if these are identified, it is called a cystic nephroblastoma. This tumor is commonly seen in the pediatric.
different age group up to four years, but in young adult females also, very rarely it may be identified. Now, this kind of a cystic tumor has to be differentiated in the pediatric age group from this. So this actually here is, again, you see multiple cysts. This is a NCCT image and this is a CCT image. So do you think that there is septal enhancement? No, there is no septal enhancement. In fact, these are not septations at all. These are multiple non-communicating cysts. And this is actually a dysplastic kidney, sometimes difficult to differentiate from a multilocular cystic renal tumor. But on ultrasound, you see that these are not septations. These are multiple non-communicating cysts. And this is how you differentiate the two. Uh, well, in this elderly female, the history is quite characteristic. And you find that there is a well-defined mass. There is this enhancing solid component. The wall is enhancing and seen to be thickened, and there is some amount of insignificant calcification. But whenever you see an enhancing solid component within a cystic mass, you know that you're dealing with a category 4 cyst, and this is indeed a cystic RCC. So just to recapitulate, measurable wall enhancement, category 3 cyst, septations, with enhancement, calcification, wall enhancement, category 3 cyst. If you see this wall thickening and enhancement, again a category 3 cyst. But when you see the solid enhancing components in a cystic mass, which is category 4, and as you can see, MR images depict the enhancement much better as compared to CT. So we saw that cystic masses are quite easy to characterize as malignant, but we often encounter solid masses, and you have to differentiate the solid malignant from the solid benign masses. So how do we go about it? Well, uh, of course, the morphology is important, but recently a very good sign has been described on MR imaging, which takes uh, into account the interface that the mass forms with the renal parenchyma, whether it is forming an angular interface or whether it is a round interface. And uh, on T2-weighted MR, an angular interface between a mass and the renal parenchyma has been described only in benign lesions. And this sign has got a high specificity for characterizing benign masses. So uh, we are going to see some different patients uh, in which here, for example, you have this angular interface. Here again, you have a lesion, lesion showing an angular interface. And again, another mass on MR, which is showing this angular interface. And this is a Bosnic category 1 cyst. This, because of the thick septations, is a Bosnic 2F cyst. And this is an angiomyolipoma. All these are benign masses, as against this round interface, which is seen in this lesion, a smaller mass with a round interface, and this uh, uh, pelvic location of this mass, which is making a round interface. And you find that all three lesions are malignant, with this one being a TCC. So uh, of course, that helps. But um, more uh, by and large, you're going to uh, depend on the morphology to differentiate between benign and malignant masses. And you look at the margins of the lesion, you see the interface that the mass forms with the renal parenchyma. In malignant masses, it will be absent. The mass will show some amount of heterogeneity. The enhancement will always be present and it would be heterogeneous. So these are the malignant features and uh, this is what we have to look out for. So here uh, you have the ultrasound, CT and MR images. You find that the mass is quite well defined. The margins are well defined. The interface with the renal parenchyma is preserved. It is relatively hypovascular. It is not showing that much of enhancement. So when you see these benign features in a mass, in a patient with a typical history, young patient with a headache, dizziness, hypertension, you know that you're dealing with a reninoma, especially if you look at the location of this tumor, which is actually juxtagromerula or intracortical more towards the medulla. And uh, in this patient, again, you have a mass which is showing all the benign features, that is the interface with the renal parenchyma is preserved, it is quite homogeneous. 
This mass is showing significant enhancement. So when you see an enhancing mass, which shows all the benign features, then think of an oncocytoma in an adult patient. Uh, sometimes, of course, the oncocytomas can show the central heterogeneity on a T2 MR. This will appear as this hyperintensity. On delayed MR, you will see enhancement in the central heterogeneity. So do not mistake a scar of an oncocytoma for the heterogeneity that is seen in a tumor because of necrosis. When the scar is seen, it is quite typical of an oncocytoma. Now here you have a mass which is again heterogeneous as against the masses that we saw just now, uh, which were quite homogeneous in appearance. The interface even on ultrasound cannot be appreciated. On CT, the mass is showing a lot of necrosis. There is peripheral enhancement and uh, some amount of heterogeneous enhancement. So all these are malignant features. And in a child, if you see something like this, think of a mesoblastic nephroma, which is the most common solid tumor seen in the neonatal period, which develops from mesenchymal proliferation. Again, a heterogeneous mass in a child who is four years old, and look at the heterogeneous enhancement over here, and this is a solid mass. And when you see this, you know that you're dealing with Wilms tumor, the commonest age of presentation being three to four years. The tumor develops from the metanephros. It grows by direct extension and uh, um, spread within the abdomen and also hematogenous spread is common. This needs to be differentiated from a neuroblastoma in the pediatric age group. These tumors show significant calcification. A neuroblastomas cross the midline more often. They encase the vascular structures and lift the vascular structures away from the vertebral column. And it is important to differentiate uh, the two from each other. When a Wilms tumor is identified, if it is confined to the kidney, it is a stage one tumor. If there is perinephric extension, it is a stage two tumor. If the tumor is seen spreading into the uh, peritoneum with these peritoneal deposits, this is a stage three tumor and spread to the liver, lungs or bones will make it a stage four tumor, whereas bilateral tumors are staged as stage five Wilms tumors. Now, moving on to masses in the adults. This patient again has a typical history of hematuria of recent onset and even on NCCT you can see that the mass is looking quite aggressive. This is the corticomedullary phase and here you can appreciate the heterogeneity in this tumor. Also appreciate that the tumor is showing uh, enhancement similar to that of the cortex in the corticomedullary phase and uh, the interface with the renal parenchyma is not well defined. You know that you're dealing with a malignant mass as against the benign masses that we had just seen. When you see such a mass, always describe it with the aim to stage. So first of all, look at the size of the tumor, less than seven centimeter or more than seven centimeter. This is going to be the cutoff between a T1 or a T2 stage lesion. Then look at the perinephric fat and also look at the renal vein and uh, the IVC when there is extension into the perinephric space or into the vessels, you know that you're dealing with a T3 stage tumor, tumor thrombus, you know, typically expands the lumen. Look at the gerotas fascia and the adrenals. If these are involved, this is a T4 tumor. Presence of lymph nodes, a single lymph node would be an N1 stage. Multiple nodes or a nodal mass makes it N2 tumor. And of course, CT makes it very easy to identify the metastasis in the liver, bones, and the lungs. So we are coming back to the same tumor. And I'm showing you the perinephric extension in this tumor. Again, see that how the renal vein is expanded by this enhancing tumor mass. There is invasion of the gerotas fascia and paraspinal muscles uh, are also invaded. You find that there is a lymph nodal mass which is present. The adrenals are, however, intact. But still, this is a stage four lesion because uh, parenchymal uh, pulmonary lesions were also identified. 
So RCC, which is the most common type of uh, uh, renal cancer, clear cell variety is seen in 70 to 75%. These lesions, they tend to be exophytic because they arise from the cortex and it they are hypervascular. In the corticomedullary phase, they will show enhancement. But it is just that in small masses, the enhancement of the mass will get masked by the enhancement of the cortex as well. So therefore, the textbooks say that nephrographic phase is much better for visualization of these masses. But actually, these hypervascular masses will show a washout of contrast during the nephrographic phase and the rest of the renal parenchyma will now begin to enhance and the mass will stand out better. Heterogeneity is always going to be present. So here, of course, there is this mass which is not very well defined in the corticomedullary phase but in the nephrographic phase, you find that the mass stands out. So this is the importance of these two phases in uh, renal imaging, and you can identify even a small tumor. Now, what imaging offers is not just identification of a malignant mass, differentiation of benign and malignant, but the pattern of enhancement can also characterize the three most common subtypes of RCC. If you see an avid enhancement in the mass in the corticomedullary phase, it is likely to be a clear cell RCC. Relatively low grade enhancement is seen in papillary lesions and intermediate enhancement is seen in the chromophobe tumors. And uh, um, for example, over here, you have this huge mass, which is cystic. The enhancement is definitely present. There is mural thickening there are some enhancement uh, enhancing mural components so this kind of appearance uh, is seen in a papillary rcc that mimics a cyst and shows subtle enhancement so do not just uh, call it a benign mass think of a papillary rcc again on the corticomedullary phase this is a different patient where you see some heterogeneity you know you are dealing with a malignant mass this mass is however hypovascular and look at the nephrographic phase you can see that it is a cystic solid mass and there is this uh, solid enhancing component the septations etc can be identified Injections in a mass, please think of a papillary variant of RCC. This tumor, we see that it is showing enhancement in the corticomedullary phase, but it is less than that of the enhancing cortex, less than what we saw in the first case, but there is vascularity. So this is what they mean when they say that chromophobe RCC will show intermediate enhancement. And again, another mass, which is much more aggressive, the enhancement is less, but definitely enhancing even in the corticomedullary phase. So um, if a heterogeneous mass enhances similar to the renal cortex, think of a clear cell RCC when the enhancement is lesser to the cortex it is either a papillary RCC which is more likely to be cystic with those solid components or a chromophobe RCC. Now here you see that there is an ill-marginated mass but on CT images the mass is completely filling up the kidney and yet the renal shape is preserved. Okay, and I hope you can appreciate that there is extension of the tumor over here into the ureter, into the renal vein, and uh, um, the mass on MR shows uh, pelvic elysial system displacement, extension into the renal sinus can be appreciated over here. Again, you can see the ureteric and the vascular invasion, and on diffusion weighted images the mass shows significant diffusion restriction. So when you see this kind of an appearance then you are thinking of a transitional cell carcinoma and these are typically bean type lesions with preserved renal shape. They are usually hypo enhancing and mostly multifocal because of ureteric peristalsis, the tumor foci tend to be uh, traveling along the ureters and always look at the entire urinary tracts. Sometimes you may get this typical cutoff of a lesion um, uh, uh, DCC sitting in the renal pelvis, which is described as the goblet sign or the Bergman sign, quite characteristic of a DCC. So up till now, we were talking about enhancement, but enhancement is not the only feature in solid masses that will help to characterize them. So 
Other features aspects can also be appreciated, especially on DW images and frequency selective gradient imaging. So here uh, you have a uh, uh, exophytic mass and you find that uh, the mass is quite heterogeneous there is some hypervascularity vessels are seen in this mass i'm not sure on ncct if there is fat within the mass well fat can also be present in uh, uh, rcc so in order to characterize this hyperechoic mass we are going to go in for mr these are the in phase MR images, when you see this peripheral hyperintensity, these are the opposed phase images. And what do you see? You find that in this peripheral part, which is appearing abnormal, there is the signal intensity drop. And this uh, signal intensity drop or the India ink artifact is quite characteristic for uh, diagnosing bulk fact which is the characteristic feature of angiomyolipoma. So this is the importance of chemical shift imaging in evaluation of renal masses for detection of lesions that can contain intracellular lipid. Angiomyolipoma, as we saw, but 40% of clear cell RCC can also show presence of fat. So these are the in and opposed phase images. In uh, cystic mass, you see that this is a small focal of signal drop that can be appreciated. On contrast enhanced imaging, enhancement is seen just in this part of the lesion and you find that even diffusion restriction is present in this part of the lesion. So you know that you're dealing with a malignant lesion, which indeed is a fat containing RCC. So diffusion restriction means it is a malignant mass and your ADC values will help to differentiate malignant solid masses, which will have a lower ADC from malignant cystic masses, which generally show higher ADC. DC. Among the benign masses, the only mass that shows diffusion restriction is oncocytoma, which is known to be quite cellular, but the ADC values are never going to be below one. Uh, in fact, we have not seen oncocytomas which show ADC values less than 1.3, even which are characteristic of RCC. So here you have this mass, which is quite heterogeneous. And uh, there is a pseudo capsule which is seen as a T2 hypo intensity. This is often present in RCC, a breach of the pseudo capsule over here and heterogeneous enhancement. And look at the ADC values. They are extremely low. So when you get this low ADC, all identified is solid or cystic then look at the enhancement pattern if the lesion shows vivid enhancement then in the adult you are thinking of rcc or oncocytoma look at the morphology in a child of course it is only a wilms tumor uh, now if you have a doubt then you can go for diffusion weighted imaging in rcc the adc values will be very low as compared to oncocytoma if the mass is showing low level enhancement look at the morphology and the margins first if the margins are well defined and if it is cystic think of a papillary rcc if the margins are poorly defined it is a tcc again diffusion imaging will show restriction in a tcc but not in a papillary rcc if a lesion is showing equivocal enhancement you have no choice but to go ahead with diffusion mr and when you see restriction on diffusion imaging you know you're dealing with a malignant mass then you look at the location of the lesion so if the lesion is cortical it is a chromophobe rcc which can show equivocal enhancement and if it is pelvic in location it is a tcc which is again hypovascular no diffusion restriction think of a renenoma renenomas are again hypovascular masses cysts we have discussed in great detail the only thing that you need to know about a complex cyst is that in an adult it is an rcc in a child think of multilocular cystic a renal tumor or a nephroma now is the shape of renal mass going to help in differentiating benign from malignant a lot has been talked about this ball type lesions which are deform the renal contour and the bean type lesions which do not deform the renal contour if you look at the conditions which can cause ball type or bean type appearance of the kidney, both benign and malignant conditions are included in each category. In fact, here, uh, this is a two-year-old female with a Wilms tumor, a ball type lesion, 
a 60 year old female with a ball type lesion this is a renal papillary cystic rcc and then a young adult female where you have this ball type exophytic lesion but this is a benign oncocytoma so you cannot differentiate the masses on the basis of a ball shape all you can say is that masses that originate in the cortex will have a ball shape whereas masses which are not pre predominantly cortical like this renenoma which is juxta cortical or this uh, pelvic mass which is a transitional cell carcinoma or a renal medulla car medullary carcinoma all the masses that arise in the medulla are going to have a bean shape or even small cortical masses like metastasis uh, will not really distort the renal contour in a child, if you see this kind of hypoechoic masses, which may be multiple, do not think of metastasis. So here on cross-sectional imaging also, you find that the masses are not enhancing and the kidneys are somewhat enlarged. Always think of nephroblastomatosis, which is a precursor to a Wilms tumor. There are two types, the intralobar type of nephroblastomatosis, which give rise to Wilms tumor, and the perilobar, which have a syndromic association. Of course, in the adults, when there are multiple um, masses with ill-defined margins, think of a primary. In fact, you will metastasis and you will find a primary somewhere. And of course, multiple masses in association with lymphadenopathy are likely to be lymphomas. So the characterization of a renal mass is an uphill task, but I won't say that it is actually impossible and we can actually uh, achieve it if we go about it in a proper manner. Thank you. Thank you.